Hi everyone, this is Miguel here on Z Paragon. Uh, bringing you a different video on this time. This time on the music side of things on my, for my recording techniques class. All right. So first off, I like to explain. Like, don't worry. I'll put like little pictures and stuff like this. It won't be a static screen. I like to explain um, the seven characteristics of sound. The very first one. Well, not in particular order. They, they, they all you know are very occur simultaneously. Okay. So the very first one I'd like to talk about is amplitude. Okay, hold on. Amplitude, right? It's pretty much this right here. Like this, this wave right here is a, um, sorry, I mean, this, uh, this is a center line right here. And that's what the pretty much center line, this is like the positive side of the, of the amplitude. It's like negative side of the amplitude. And um, the greater the, hold on, let me scroll down here. And to uh, conceptualize this in music, I'll show you the short and long ones. So, like, right now, this seems to be like, um, kind of, kind of a long amplitude, I'll say. Now, um, the bigger the amplitude, the louder the sound. That's how amplitude relates into music. Okay, so this is like a smaller amplitude. So, if, um, if you hear sound very softly, this is how it probably looks like very soft sounds. And, you know, it gets more finer than that, you know. That's what, like, the concept of amplitude is. Now, velocity, of course, is, um, the second concept is velocity. This relates to the, well, I don't have to do a Google search for this. Well, velocity, in terms of music, relates to how fast a sound wave travels uh, through air. So, an interesting thing to keep in mind is that a velocity, right, um, sound waves, Sound waves travel faster when it's in a hotter room. So if, if you your studio is hot, um, sound will travel a lot faster. So that's that's up to you. you know, if you want to set up a hot studio, you do that. You do you do that. All right. Third concept: frequency. Okay, this is um, the number of times vibrations of sound repeats in a cycle. So um, if you have a let me just type this in here. Frequency. Okay, so pretty much same thing, right? As amplitude, except um, look at this. That's like frequency right there. This is great amplitude, right? Because look, this is center line right here. That's a lot of amplitude. So very loud and very very uh, a, a loud amp. It's a it's a loud sound with a lot of frequency. So. Um, not a lot of frequency, but a lot of um, periods in it. But um, so that's like one cycle right here, two cycle, three cycle, four cycle. So like, that's that's what frequency is. And um, the more more cycles you have, the the more louder is perceived by the person that hears it. So um, that's what pretty much frequency is. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about frequency is that the human ear. The lowest sound a human ear can perceive is 20 hertz, right? And the highest sound is 20,000 hertz. That's what that's what the human can perceive. And um, the most dam the moment a sound becomes damaging to the human ear is at 120 hertz. That's when um, it could hurt your eardrums and stuff like that. All right, next concept. I like to there's like seven concepts by the way seven concepts it's phase shift all right i think i do best right this by demonstrating so um i'll demonstrate this shortly i'll cut it out don't worry i'll be right back i just have to load up something all right guys welcome back i have loaded up the documents in vegas um we'll go with the well harmonic lesson because that relates into the oh no never mind understanding different phases. This relates to the phase shift part of it. All right, here's a very interesting part. So I'll just play all three of these sounds at once, and I'll let you see that. See, very loud, very loud sound. Uh, you're probably gonna hit double, double feedback because of that, because I had the microphone and the actual OBS recording that. So what I have here loaded up is the sound one, right? We'll just call it sound one, sound two. And I'll describe them in sound three, right? All right, sound one and two 
have the same frequency and amplitude. Sorry, the same frequency and um, let's see, same yeah, they have the same frequency and uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of the other term, and it starts at the same cycle. So whenever a sound has the same frequency and has it starts at the same cycle, uh, I'll just mute this with the third one right here. Um, it's double the sound. So let's play it again. That's very loud. Okay, so if I mute this one, right, and just let this one play by itself, it just sounds half, right? It's, that's half the sound. Now look, this third one right here. Oh, let me just stop that real quick. So now this third sound right here, right? This one has the same frequency, but starts at a different different cycle. This one starts at 180 degrees um, different. So you, you'll know what that means if uh, you took math, it's 180 degrees. So in essence, they cancel each other out because this one, um, see, they cancel each other out. This one starts at zero, and the, the one at the bottom is 180. Whenever you have the two sounds opposite each other, Opposite um, amplitudes, they cancel each other out. When they're in the same frequency and cycle, they double the sound. So if you ever want to cheat the system, or like maybe get the best out of your speakers, just like load up the same tracks and uh, play it on multiple like this, and you should have increased uh, sound. All right, next concept, right? I like to talk about is harmonic content. Okay, so harmonic content. This is the harmonic one. Is okay. Let me. Is pretty much. It's very straightforward. Let's say. Let me see. Okay, I have quite a few of them in here. Okay. It's very very straightforward. So let's say I have a frequency. This is a frequency. Let's say this is frequency of 220 hertz. Right. This is 440 hertz. This is 660 hertz. And you know, and so on. So harmonics means that, oh look, if you play a sound at, let's see, a two, this is by itself, 220 hertz, then you, you play the sound at 440 hertz, so essentially we have, for the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, and fifth harmonic. A, a thing about harmonics is that the, the even ones, meaning two and four, they'll sound quite nice. Let me just test it out for you guys. Two and four are playing right now. See, it sounds quite nice. Now let me show you. Okay, I probably should put a warning, but hey, let's you watched this far, so you might as well see what happens. <laughs> Don't leave for this one. All right, so let's mute that. Okay, let's play. Let's first test out the first and third, just to show you that never play odd harmonics, because that just sounds horrible, unless you're doing some sort of irregular beat or something like that. All right, look at this. Prepare yourself. Prepare your ears. So bad, right? Okay, now let's let's add one more. Let's add the fifth one, the odd one. So bad. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's 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 a good alarm, right? Just get if you want an alarm, get an auto harmonic um, sounding thing. You want to like uh, create masterpieces use even harmonics. All right, that's pretty much the lesson in harmonics, right? So whenever you create sounds, if you're going for like some sort of nice musical taste, make sure you use odd, uh, even harmonics, meaning like you'll have. Um, your your frequencies at let's say it's 220 440 i have the okay i have the files right here 180 so it just increases like, like so increases by 440 every time so use twice the number of that okay the next thing i'd like to talk about is well envelope this, that's well. I might as well type that up. Oh, might as well type that up in Google. All right, here we go. The envelope. Oh, I should probably type it in music terms. Not like, see, look, I knew it was gonna pop that up. Okay, music. All right. So, 
Well, this is not really... Well, I guess I can explain the ADCR. Okay, so... The envelope is pretty much the... Excuse me. Characteristics, characteristics of the... The music instrument you're playing. So, we have the A for attack. Meaning, like, the moment you hit the, the note. Like, let's say you have a guitar. You pluck the note. That's... Has a that has a quick attack, you know, boom, because like that's instantaneously. It's not it's not a slow build up. So boom, you plug the you plug the guitar. Now decay is like how long the note takes to um, actually goes go down. You know, like okay, you attack it, and then like let's see how how fast that like that that goes down to a sustain. So it goes attack decay, the sustain. It's like how long the note resonates. Like so, you know, I think. Resonate resonates is pretty much the good word. Then release is like okay, how long how how long did the note take in order to like fade away pretty much completely? So you have attack, decay, sustain, resonate. That's one thing in envelope. Another thing in envelope is to keep in mind is the um, the way sound is projected from an instrument. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of a good concept. No sound projection. Yeah. I'll show you guys a picture for that. Alright, the last concept. I think this is like the hardest concept to grasp next to the frequency because wavelength is very loaded. Let me just, I'll do my best to try to explain this. There's a formula for this too as well if you're interested in that. Okay. Okay, the wavelength is pretty much defined as the beginning and end of a cycle. So it's pretty much like from here, well here there all right so boom that's a wavelength like that so what this mean is that now wavelength is the one term that you guys might have to look up because this was i'm not 100 percent certain on it the textbook tried his best but i don't think the textbook really defined it pretty well in my in my eyes okay so to my understanding okay so this is the one Disclaimer right here. This one, this not, might not be accurate on wavelength. That you have, you start right here. This, this pretty much wavelength, and then uh, what this means. I know for a fact. This is the fact right here. High frequencies means that it has a shorter wavelength. How that, how that translate? I think that means that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let me get an example right here. Let's pull down here. So that means you're gonna have very short distances distances to cover, and so therefore you're gonna have more frequency. So like more more of these going up and down. So that means it will be a high. So a short. I'm thinking this how it relates to frequency. Maybe a, sh a shorter wavelength. It does give you a higher frequency, of course, of course. I just said that. But um, let me show you the equation for this. Because like it compresses itself. All right, it's lambda. Equals wavelength. Equals velocity over frequency. So, I get well the velocity equ equation is quite different. Um, I'll let you look at look that look that up. I guess I'll conclude the video right here, guys. If um, that's like one presentation form I was thinking about doing, I was thinking, okay, maybe I just go to Google Images, type in a few things, talk about a few things, and um, demonstrate with software if possible, if I could demonstrate a concept. If this helped you, um, please leave a comment. Tell me what part was the best part or which part should strengthen. I don't mind criticism as long as it's constructive. Okay, um, well, with that said, Please have a great day, a week, all that good stuff. See Paragon out.